Greetings everyone to my YouTube channel. If you are new in this channel, I am Advocate Bulem Marcelo. The purpose of this channel is to teach the Word of God and to teach the law. We will be concentrating mainly on topics that affect the vulnerable in our society. Not to give them legal opinion, but to teach on different legal issues so that our people can have an understanding what the law says in different or regarding different topics. But today I'll be preaching the word. I have entitled my message Praying Like Hannah. Um, and our scripture reading will be taken from First Samuel chapter 1. It will be better to read the entire chapter, but my specific emphasis will be on verse 11 and verse 24. I'm sure you will realize from my past messages that Hannah is one of my favorite characters in the Holy Bible. One of the reasons why I like her so much is because she was a woman of faith she trusted God. She was a woman of prayer. I so much believe in the power of prayer because prayer releases power. Prayer, somebody said, it's humanity meeting with divinity. Prayer is a means of us communicating with God. When you pray, you are saying to God, God, I trust in you. And I trust that you are able to do it for me. You are saying to God, God, you are able. You are not just able, but you are more than able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above that which we can ask or think of, beyond our highest prayers, beyond our highest imagination, according to the power that is at work within us. Let me tell you something. I am a product of prayer. I am a product of the power of God. If it was not for God, I wouldn't be where I am as a person and in every area of my life. God has been so good to me. I am a living testimony of the grace of God and of the mercies of God, which I knew every morning. I'm a living testimony of the mercies of God. And I can say boldly even this morning that if it was not for the mercies of God, I could have been consumed. Now let's look at the life of Hannah. This woman, Hannah, was, the Bible says he was in a polygamous marriage. Hannah and Penina are two women who were married to Elekana. The Bible says Elekanah loved her too much, but because she did not have a child, she was miserable in her own words. She was desperate. She was miserable. And what aggravated the situation was that the other wife, Penina, used to tease her, used to abuse her regarding her situation. You know what I find it very interesting about the issue of abuse? Whilst in South Africa, we are the, in the middle of 16 days of activism. You know, in most instances, we say mainly men are the perpetrators of violence. And that is very true. I align myself with that view because that stats proves it. But women can be very abusive towards each other. Women can also be psychologically and emotionally abusive towards each other. Look at this woman, Penina. She does not empathize. She does not feel sorry for Hannah. That shame, I can have children. This poor woman cannot have children. Instead, she's the one who's abusing her emotionally. She's the one who's abusing her psychologically. She's the one who is teasing her. 
She is not comforting her. That is why the situation was worse for her. But what I like about Hannah, you can see from her actions that this is a woman who trusted God. This is a woman who knew where to go when she's in a desperate situation. This is a woman who knew that when you have problems, you go to God. You go to the men of God. You don't tell the whole world your problems because some of the people that you can talk to or that you would want to talk to, they will not help you. Somebody said, when the Shunammite woman went to the prophet and he met his steward on the way or his right, right hand man or his helper, I don't know what you want to, to call him on the way. He asked the Shunammite woman what is wrong and the Shunammite woman said it is well. He, she did not discuss her problem with this one. She said it is well because she knew it was going to be well, but she also said it is well because this one was not the one who was able to help her. So let's look at the li life of Hannah. You know, yesterday I read a status. Somebody placed a status that said, don't allow your problems to make you cry on everyone's shoulders because some shoulders are public announcement. Some of the people, when you confide to them, the whole world will know that don't see her like this. This is what is happening to her. You know, but what I know for sure, what I know for sure, based on my life experience, is that everybody is going through something. And everybody has a need. And in every situation of, in every situation, every season of our lives, you need something. You need people to talk to. You need God. Now let's look at Hannah in 1 Samuel chapter 1. The Bible says Hannah, when he was praying, he made a solemn promise to God. And this is how he prayed. This is how she prayed, rather. Lord Almighty, look at me, your servant. See my trouble and remember me. You know, there are times where you think, has God forgotten me? No, God has not forgotten me. Hannah says to God, remember me. If you give me a son, I promise that I will dedicate him to you for his whole life and that he will never have his hair cut. For me, the key principle which I want to establish from this message is to say when Hannah went to God, to ask for a son, she made a promise. She said to God, God, I don't have a son. I am desperate. The Bible says she cried bitterly. She cried aloud. The Bible said she prayed until she did not have enough words. Her lips were just moving. So much so, the man of God, Eli, ended up thinking maybe she is drunk. But let's go back to her prayer. She said, Lord, if you give me a son, I will give him back to you. Now what I like about Hannah, or the principle that I'm trying to establish here, is her intention. When she was asking God for a son, what was her intention? What was behind this prayer? She said to God, God, if you give me a son, I will give him back to you. He will serve you for your whole life. He didn't say, I will show Penina. She didn't say, God, give me a son 
so that I can get at Pedina, so that people can also see that I can conceive, so that I can make my husband happy, so that my tears can be wiped. Well, of course, all those things will happen. But that was not her intention. So now the question is, today you may be praying, you are praying for something. You are praying for education. What are you going to do with it? Are you planning to have that PhD, that degree, that master's, that diploma, so that people can see? Do you want that business opportunity to provide for your family, even to glorify God, even to serve the kingdom of God? With the proceeds of that business? Or you want everything just for yourself? There's nothing wrong with enjoying things that God has given you. But are you just self-centered? Or are you God-centered? What is the intention? As soon as Hannah prayed and said, God, when you give me a son, I will give him back to you. Are you able to say, God, when you give me that education, when you give me that money, I will serve you with that money? Are you praying and saying, God, bless me to be a blessing? Because at the end of the day, when God blesses you, he has you in mind, but he, has, he also has somebody in mind. That is why they say, you are blessed to be a blessing. And let me tell you something. God knew the heart of Hannah. That is why God could go ahead immediately after this prayer, as you continue to read the entire chapter. She went back home. The Bible says she laid with her husband, Elekana, and she conceived immediately after this prayer. Because God knew that what she was saying, that she was going to fulfill her promise. And to demonstrate that she just didn't pray, but she prayed in faith. The Bible says, as much as she cried, as much as she was desperate, as much as she was miserable, she went away, she ate some food, and she was no longer sad. But prior to that, there's something else which happened here, which I like. After Ellie looked at her and thought she's drunk, and then they had this conversation where she was saying to Ellie, no, actually I'm not drunk, I'm miserable, I'm desperate, I'm praying to God for a child. Eli understood. He said to her, go in peace, and may the God of Israel give you what you desire. You see, for me, that encounter, it's also very important. And clearly she believed. Because the Bible says, if you believe the prophet, things will go well with you. If you believe the prophet, he will prosper. And Hannah, because she had prayed, because she had encountered on her way this man of God, the Bible says immediately thereafter, she went away, she ate food, and she was no longer sad. Then when she got home, she laid with her husband and she conceived. This is a woman of faith. This is a woman who prayed for a very long time. This is a woman who expressed her noble intentions about the gift of a child that she prayed for from God.